Welcome to this educational module. We would like to share some practical tips to help you move better. So today we're going to talk about how to take bigger steps using visual cues. So what are visual cues? Well, it's simply things that you place on the floor that you can step over and that visual cue helps you take bigger steps. Here I'm going to show you an example of somebody walking with shorter steps and how visual cues can help them walk with bigger steps. So here's the person you see is walking with shorter steps. He's a little bit towards the back of the walker, which I tend to discourage because that just eventually gets worse and then you start walking further and further behind the walker. So ideally, when you're walking, you wanna walk with bigger steps and more inside the walker. So here, it's amazing how well he can lift his leg up and step over those hurdles. So we work on that in therapy to encourage the bigger steps and picking up his feet more. After practicing in the hurdles, this next video will show you how much better he can walk after doing that activity. You can see his steps are bigger He's more inside the walker. Both are important for walking speed and stability. In this next video, uh, again, uh, we're going to first see the person walk without visual cues, and then we're going to see him walk with visual cues. So very short steps. He has a leaning forward posture, which tends to put his weight more towards his toes, which brings him off balance and I'm holding him back, otherwise he would lose his balance forward. So very short steps. Now in the next one, he's taking bigger steps and you can see how those visual cues make a huge difference with not just his walking speed, but also with his balance. If you can keep your feet ahead of your shoulders, that helps you keep your balance. So here's the, the last video of an example of visual cues. And first, this first video, you'll see that he's, the person is taking a shorter step with his left foot, and that always indicates to me that the Parkinson's is worse on the left side. Here in this next video, you see him stepping better with that left foot and you can also see that the wheels of the walker tend to shift those strips a little bit more, which makes them uneven. There's two things that you can use in your home uh, to help you with taking bigger steps, and that is agility slats or painter's tape. What you've been seeing in the videos were the agility slats, and they come in different lengths of 12 inch, 16 inch, or 20 inches. And what I do is when I get agility slats, uh, I got the 16 inch long ones. And so they come in 16 inch strips and then I cut them in half. So then I've got two eight inch strips. And then the nice thing about that is that when I put them down, you're not rolling over the strips with your walker and making them uneven. They don't interfere with that. So it's really nice. Then also you can just pick them up. When you're done using them, they're out of the way. Another thing you can use is uh, painter's tape. And uh, it's the same width as the agility slats. And you put it down and you can leave it down in your home. Uh, it's just a matter of what your preference is. In therapy, I've used tape mostly. And then I started using agility slats. And I ran across a couple individuals who had severe freezing and we tried the tape on the floor. And then for some reason, I just started using the agility slats. And I found that the severe freezers that did not respond to the tape responded to the agility slats. And I was thinking, I wonder, you know, why? And the only thing I can think of is that these agility slats are like an eighth of an inch thick, and the tape is just flush to the ground. So I think it was the added visual cue for them to step over, even though it was an eighth of an inch, 
it gave them that extra stimulus to pick up their foot and step over the, the slats. So if you're a severe freezer and it's just difficult to get from one room to the other, uh, I would try the agility slats uh, to see if it works for you. To find information about these slats, you can go on my website. It's parkinsonspt.com and you go on the tab in the main menu under helpful devices and then you scroll down to agility slats you click on that and then it gives you some information about uh, agility slats and then here are two links that you can click on to get the agility slats this is just an example of walking across the agility slats using the walker with the slats cut at a shorter width. Uh, so these are eight inches wide. You can see the wheels completely clear, those slats, they don't interfere at all. This is just an example of how to place the slats down. And you just put them by your toes, take a step. You can take a shorter step if need be so that the person you're helping can um, go over those slats. We've been talking about using like strips of tape or the agility slats for walking. And there's also other ways of using visual cues. For example, if somebody's using a walker and they're freezing, or if they're not using a walker and they're freezing, if somebody's with them, they use their foot as the visual cue for the individual to step over. And this just shows that. So the individual's freezing, put the foot in front, they step over it, and then you repeat that as often as you need to in order to help the other person with walking. For individuals who uh, tend to freeze, or you know, like in the morning or during the night when your Parkinson's medicine has worn off and you're freezing more, uh, when you get out of bed, some individuals get up and they just, they start freezing. And that causes instability and, and it can cause falls. But when you get out of bed, you can, if you can do it without any visual cue, just remember when you first get up from the bed, your first step is a big step and that'll make you more stable. So here's just an example of putting down a sock and then you get up and you step over it. And usually the first step dictates what the second and third step will be. So if you start out with a big step, even if the second and third step get a little bit smaller, you have a little bit more leeway. But if you start with a really short step, you don't have much leeway before you end up freezing or get unsteady. Some people only initially need to put the sock down as a reminder, and then they can take the sock away later on and just imagine a sock being there, and that seems to be helpful for some people. So in summary, visual cues help to improve your step size. Now, you putting down the slats or the tape is really limited to your home. It's not practical outside of your home, but for some people, this is like a big deal because that enables them to go from one room to the other. This is something you need to practice daily, and I would talk to your physical therapist in terms of how much you need to practice it and all the details surrounding it. Those of you who take Parkinson's medication and it helps with your freezing, you notice that when your medication wears off, you start freezing more. And that's called off freezing. And off freezing is more receptive to visual cues to help you take bigger steps. Then finally, bigger steps are important for balance, walking speed, and to minimize freezing. Thank you. Thank you.